Welcome to Bold Chat. Today is Wednesday, May 11th. Andrew, you ready? I'm ready. Doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> Let's put this over here. Okay. Just give me a second. You are such a turd. No. I mean, You're such a turd. But we friend. do this every, at the we same time. The, I We do. No, we don't. We do. You are such a little sneaky snake. <laughs> That's what you are. Hit the thing. What thing? The oh, thing. you're not ready? Oh, <laughs> I'm scared. That's Serial Killers oh, International. Here we go. Bull chat. Bull chat. Can we get a new one? Can we get a, uh, something? Like, there has to be a song that has bowl in it. And it's the bowl chat. That cool. hurt. That was really loud. It hurt my precious little ears. I know before there was like 17 things that I said, save it for bowl chat, and I don't remember any of them. Well, I have one. Why is this table such a... See, I wasn't here yesterday in the studio, and everyone just threw everything on this table. There's bananas and Slim Fast and wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men and candles and games and cologne and extra microphones and pens. What? <sighs> okay, just What's up? lead with kindness. Just lead with kindness. What's the matter? Hi, Scary. Oh, hi, guys. Oh, Scary's back for M&M's. No, I need some gum. Oh. I like your sneakers. Thank you. Yeezys. Yeah. Skiri's trying to plump up so he can lose weight. (laughs) He's eating gum. (laughs) Yeah. There's no... Is that No, but you know what? He comes in here multiple times a morning and takes peanut M&Ms. Handfuls. Well, listen, I mean, I had some peanut M&Ms myself. Would you like to defend yourself, Skiri? Feel free. How do you resist peanut Mm -hmm. M&Ms? Well, I mean, mean, you can't. All kinds of M&Ms. Peanut butter M&Ms. Caramel M&Ms. The mint ones. They the have cookies, new cookie ones. The cookies and cream yeah. ones. They, M&M's, I mean, and, and it's just a whole lot of goodness in a little chocolate capsule that doesn't melt in capsule. your mouth. Capsule. Do you know what my, doesn't melt in your hands. You know what my favorite M&M always was, and it was not a very popular one, almond M&M's. I don't even know if they you still make them, but they were my favorite. Almond M&M's were great, and then there was the dark chocolate ones, which yes. I think they still have, and oh. I love those. I like the peanut butter. Peanut butter's great. Yeah. But uh, yeah, right now, I'm uh, moving on to some extra gum. <laughs> We're not sponsored, so you don't have to worry. They're not watching this. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, one day, I aspire to be on an episode of Serial Killers. Oh, j- oh this is Bowl Chat. Come on. Yeah. Oh, this is the companion yeah. podcast. This yeah. is the sister podcast of Serial Killers where we just talk about whatever. Oh, okay. Well, it's nice to... Oh, I, I would like to... Well, I'd like to talk about maybe being on the parent podcast, Serial Killers. Oh, you can do that. We can make that happen. Okay. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll do yeah. a Brooklyn Boys ah. X Serial Killers <laughs> mashup. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, so just the Brooklyn boy? Yes. Singular? Well, yeah, we'll do that. Jones? Oh, you know what? Damn it. Brody's going to be like, hey, what about me? You don't like me? Because he listens to this. Right. Well, we'll do a crossover episode. I think that would be fun. I just just think I can only take one of you at a time. I don't know if we could do Brody and Scary or Scary and Brody on the same episode. We've had Greg T on multiple times. We could definitely do. No, but there's only one of him. Do you understand? Yeah, but one of him is equal to like 42 other people. Okay. Bin people. <laughs> well, anyway. I'm going to get out of your hair now. It's been great being on my first episode of Bowl Chat ever. I love you guys. All yes, right. and you'll you be on our Serial Killers podcast very soon. Thank you. Take Yay. the whole pack. We have Maybe plenty. Get chocolate cereal that day. Done. You, you got it. <laughs> or peanut butter. How about chocolate peanut butter? Yes. Ooh. Done. <laughs> Um, what were we about to say? I don't remember. Um, I was about to talk about the pimple that's on my forehead. Oh, no. I said there was all kinds of stuff on the table, and you put your your palm in, on your face. Oh, because you were, you were just something. complaining. You were doing your normal complaining thing. Oh, no, no. I wasn't thing. complaining. No, no, no. I wasn't complaining. I was just saying that there's crap all over the place, and I come back after I wasn't here for a day, and everything's just moved around. That's not complaining. What is wrong with your head? It's not my head. It's your head. No, the outer part of your head. Oh, mine's, I have a the, pimple. mine's the inner part. I, but you if quite, you're watching this on YouTube, you can't really see it in this camera. Which why aren't you using cool. the good camera? Uh, because that required me to go in there, and I just didn't want oh, to I see. right now. So I got a pimp. I well, here's the thing: you can't pick it. I, no, I'm a picker. I'm not. I pick, and it's my fault for picking. And I hate that I picked. And I have a wedding on Friday, and I need this to go away by Friday. It doesn't it's a work scab like that, at this though. point. See, Amy also is like she's a big pimple popper. Yeah. Like if she has, if anybody has one, she wants to pop it. Yeah. And to me. No, I just, I feel like if something comes out on your body, it's there for a reason. It will go away eventually. Hmm. It may be in a bad place for something you have coming up for pictures, but that's even worse. No, no, no. It 100% is worse. And How I'm, many? 100%. Oh. And I've picked this area before. This is 
what they consider your T the zone. Triangle, right? No, it's a triangle. It's the T zone. Okay. That yeah. means it's going to scar? No. It oh. just means that that's like the skin is lighter. So it means if you're going to get a pimple or something there, it's going to show. So I have this sweet, it's not even a pimple, it's a scab at this point. And so I just need the scab to go away. I am I was thinking of like walking with a band aid on my forehead today, but I'm like, that's definitely way more. You could also just leave it alone. No, I am. The next couple of days, like now that I know it's just a scab, I just got to dry the sucker out. Put a little Neosporin on it and just call it a day. Rubbing alcohol and Neosporin. That's what I do. Worst place to get a zit, go. Here. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> I, I I believe it's on your tongue because that is a zit. That is painful. That's a canker sore. I, it's a zit. It's not a zit. I think it is. Look it up. Can you get a zit on your tongue? You can't. A it's a canker sore. No, it's a little chunk on your tongue. It's a different thing. Whatever it is, that's the worst place, yeah. or on your butt that you have to sit on. Oh, that's again. That's a hemorrhoid. No, it isn't. You have a little red pimple on your butt oh. cheek. That's that's. I'm not probably... talking about your butthole. I mean on your butt cheek. Oh, I was like, okay, that's so a that's a pimple. Looking? Canker sore. No, no, no. Can you get a pimple on your tongue? You can't. Pimple I'll look it on you don't your wanna... tongue. Yeah, you look, it's it? right here. I just Googled it. Okay. They're called lie bumps. They appear as red or white swollen bumps on the tongue. They look or feel like a pimple. They can be painful even when you aren't eating or drinking. Yeah. Some people experience burning, itching, or tingling sensations on their tongue. Okay. So that that's the most it's painful It's a lie place. burn. Whatever. It's, it's a pimple. No, it's not. Okay. It's fine. It's not I like that that annoys you, but you being like, oh, I'm back. Everything looks terrible. How are you today? That's fine. Do you like grits? I do like grits. I do too. That's cool. The instant ones are not as good as if you get them in a restaurant. I love Waffle House grits. Yeah. They're delicious. And the diner by my house, ever since I was a little kid, there was always a sign written in magic marker that was hanging right over the dessert case where the lemon meringue is. Mm -hmm. It says, we have grits. And then as soon as COVID started... No more grits. That's sad. I don't know what COVID has to do with grits. <laughs> There's a grit shortage. You didn't hear? But like a bowl of grits, I put a pat of butter and a packet of sugar and mix it, and it is so delicious. Wow. That's not that bad. A, uh, that, a pat is a little tiny little square. It's not a chunk. I mean, I don't think grits are probably healthy for you, but... Why? Isn't it just some kind of grain with, with what, milk and stuff? And I don't they cook know. It? I don't know. It doesn't sound like it would be good for you, but... I mean, maybe the way like a... In the south, they make it would be yeah. Well, because they, they put all kinds of fat probably a things ton in there. of butter, right? But I, I would like that. It's delicious. I would like a homemade grit that way. I bet you, um, our friend, what's his name, has delicious grits. I just Herm? I said his name before. Herm. Yeah. Yeah. Big Herm. I bet he makes grits in his place. I would love to go there. Can we drive down? It's Atlanta, right? Somewhere down there. I have always wanted to go to Atlanta. There's several cities on my list that I want to go see. Atlanta is one of them. Weren't you there? In, I want to go to Denver. Weren't you there in 96 and didn't you like thwart a bombing at the Olympics? Wasn't that you? What? You don't even know what this is. What were you? I know oh, you the were Olympic four. bombing and you then they made five. a movie out of it. That, yeah, Richard Jewell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why was I there? I don't know. I thought it was you. What? I have no idea. Are you good today? Nope, I am not. You are in several different places. I don't think it's I here, am. though. I am. And I haven't seen a pat of butter since I was in sleepaway camp. Like, Do you want me to cut you a pat of butter and we can put that on matzah? No, that's, that's not it, though. Like, it, they actually come in pats. When I, was, when I was in camp. Individual little. They would give us a piece of white bread like we were in jail and a pat of butter. Yeah. So it was a little wax piece of wax cardboard with a, a small slice of mm-hmm. butter, which is a pat. And a little wax paper on top of it, hmm. and that's what we—that's what we would would use for our bread. Well, I was telling Jackie my prison meal today was. Um, <laughs> I love, and I know it's going to sound really stupid, but the mini pretzels, like the—I don't know who the maker of the mini pretzels. Bachman. Yes, mm-hmm. they make mini ones in a clear bag now. They used to not be in a clear bag. They used clear, to be in a yellow bag. Clear bag. Yes, it's like see through. Um, clear. Is there a logo printed on it? Yeah. It okay. just is weird, but it's like a pound of mini pretzels. I don't think that's Bachman's then because theirs is still yellow and whatever. <gasps> Their butter pretzels are the best. False. Dislike those immensely. I don't like the fake butter They're flavor. They're the best for me. I don't mm-hmm. think it's fake either. No, I'm not a fan. Um. Anyway, back to my story. Sorry. I <laughs> love eating handfuls of the mini pretzels. When you say mini, do you mean like the little nubs? They're like no. the little. No. Like they're small pretzels. Like they're twisted like a pretzel? Yes. Okay. And I love chugging them with some water. Chugging. I the, 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 yes. You have the crunchy, salty pretzel. And then as you're chewing it, you drink water at the same time. Mm. 
Chef's kiss. Delicious. That's almost like eating cereal with water. It, I've, listen, don't knock until you try it. I like to, here's my thing. I like to suck on a pretzel until it gets soft, and then I can just mush it with my tongue. Mm. But mo- what's it, who's that? Uh, it's for work. So. Okay. Well, it, this is work, so don't worry. This is work? Uh, so, but by most of the time, by the time I, d- I can't get it that far, I just crunch it. Same thing with an M&M. Like, if I'm sucking on it just because I want it to melt in my mouth, I can't wait, and I crunch it. Kind of like the Tootsie Pop thing. How many licks? Do you know if One, I eat- two, a three. What's that? I know. It's the owl. Okay. They used to play those all the time. Yeah. One, two, three. Three. <laughs> um, okay, so what was I saying? We were Pretzels, talking- little bags of pretzels. Mm. Pats of butter, grits. A plus, not grits. Ooh, you were on to something. Uh, we were going to oh, Atlanta. Oh, candies. You wanted to go to Atlanta. Warheads. Nothing was candy. I need to talk about this one. I can't eat. Well, let's remember. Let's go back to Atlanta. Okay. Okay. Just go ahead. Atlanta. You don't have to write it down. If I click it, I'll remember. Okay. Atlanta. Okay. See? Now I'll remember it. Um, Okay. So back to Warheads. Warheads. I can't. Wait, wait, hold on. What do you mean back to? We never never said Warheads. But you were talking about sucking on candy, so it made me think of Warheads. That's the one with the fizzy stuff inside? No. Okay. Um, Those were the ones that had, they, they came in like all different colors. Jawbreakers? It was the guy with like the exploding head and they were about like right. this big and it was really fizzy Because there was fizzy crud inside. No, it was just extremely sour on the inside. Huh. And the black warheads were the craziest ones. They were like clear and you would suck on them and I can't do sour because my left eye twitches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. Did you used to get them from the ice cream truck? What? Warheads. No. Oh. When I was in school, people used to bring them, but they were like a banned candy. Oh, because it was like you couldn't have gum or candy in school. And then people like would bring warheads in. And that was like the thing. When you were growing up in the suburbs, was there an ice cream truck in the neighborhood? Yes. But (laughs) depending on it only started coming more as I got older. When we were kids, like, I don't know, like four to like eighth grade. We used to have to tell my uncle to call the ice cream truck to come because oh there wouldn't God. be an ice cream truck. Well, now truck you do it came. on an app. But when I was little. What? We, yeah. Yeah. There's an ice cream truck I know in Jersey and it's on an app. You just get it to come. That's insane. Right. These kids have it way too right? easy. Because when I was little, we had the circus man. It was a circus man truck. Yeah. And I even remember the guy, the driver's name, his name was Warren. Mm. And one time he came in our pool. He jumped over the thing in the ice cream truck and he went in the pool and then he went back and he gave us all free ice cream. I love that. It was great. But see, they also had lots of. I don't know. I guess now it would be called racist candy mm. back back in the day. Mm. They, I always remember because when you would buy ice cream or whatever, they would give you a little stick of gum mm-hmm. and it was an orange wrapper and there was a, a Chinese guy on it. Oh, you know, the, the stereotypical moment, yeah, yeah, the yeah, hat yeah. and the eyes and everything. And you can't you can't do that anymore. And no. then they also they can't do. Do you remember Alexander the Great? That grape, Alexander the Grape. It was can't, <laughs> there were there were three of them. There was Alexander the Grape. Mm-hmm. There were lemon heads, which they still have. Yeah. And there was cherry clan. Now, Cherry Clan is not okay anymore. No. I'll, do you want to see a picture of what the box sure. looked like? So those were the three because it was cherry, grape. I want to be shocked that this was, was actually approved. There was cherry, grape, and lemon. And they still make the lemon heads. And I think you can find uh, Alexander the Grape out there somewhere. Hmm. So this was, uh, it was kind of like a, I guess, a tiny little jawbreaker. I yeah. like jawbreakers. Yeah. I find them, like the gobstoppers. I love gobstoppers. I, I liked gobstoppers too. They, they're still out. Yes. They, yeah, they are. Okay. So this was, this was Cherry Clan. Um, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but see, as kids, we thought nothing of it. Yeah. That's funny. That it was, it was, was delicious. Like approved and people were able to buy that. Well, I don't know if it was approved. It just, it just, that's just, it just was. That was 80s. Ferrera, Pan. That was 80s. Hmm. Right? That's not. That's so bad. Yeah, no, they can't do that now. No. Anyway. <laughs> no cherry clan. But so now, it, first of all, we never had a soft ice cream truck in our neighborhood, yep, ever. Ever. It was always the bars. Yes. We got the WWF wrestling bars and, yeah. and snow cones and all that garbage. We had SpongeBob um, and Bugs Bunny. The mm-hmm. best is when the gumballs were on the eyes. First of all, that is the worst gum of all time. It is. Any gum that comes on an ice cream bar, those things have those suckers have been on there for yep. quite some time. And, and a lot the, of times they were misplaced, so they weren't exactly the in the eyes right spot. And the mouth. Yeah, and the color would all ooze off onto the ice cream. Disgusting. Bugs' teeth are actually where his eyes yes. are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think what I like. My fa- my favorite then, and I don't like it anymore, is 
Remember the? Uh, it was like a chocolate eclair, but it had that hard chunk of chocolate in the middle. They st- I think good humor. St- it was a good humor thing. Good humor, I think, still makes it. Oh, my favorite was the push pop. I love yes. the rainbow push pops. You're right. Those things were so freaking good. And the thing is, they sold them at grocery stores. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't the same. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. my cafeteria used to sell them in school, and we could get them. And the ice cream truck would sell them. And then you could buy it in the store sometimes. And it just... All three had different flavors. But sometimes it was so hard that when you pushed it, either the straw went through your finger. Yes. Or, or your palm, yes. or it broke. Yes. And you're like, damn it. Yes. And it would come out, and you couldn't push it up. <laughs> Stupid thing. And, and have then to you were stuck. Peel the cardboard. Then, yes. I would get a pen and try to jam a pen in there to push it up. The worst is when you would have it, too, and you'd be, like, licking, like, the cardboard towards the end, like, huh? <laughs> or you would push it too far, and the whole thing would yes. fall out of the cardboard onto the street, and then I would cry. Yeah. They also had Mrs. Fields cookies. Yeah, no, it, that was uh, not for us. We they used to sell cookies and they would prepackage them in like two or three, and those were the best cookies ever. My favorite ice cream truck story is you know when I was a kid, I went to Hebrew school, so I was probably ten or eleven or whatever. And the ice cream truck always used to park outside the Hebrew school, so mm-hmm. the kids could get it before or after. And they didn't, you know, the school didn't like that. And then the guy was like, "Yeah, you don't like that," and he started selling hot dogs. And and like pork hot dogs, yeah. which they don't yeah. like at a temple. At <laughs> yeah, a Hebrew I school. So I just remember the rabbi like running out, chasing after the guy like an old man. <laughs> and the guy was just driving away. But yeah, he was like, screw you. You don't want us here? Here, let's. I'm going to sell hot dogs. Yeah, I feel like mobile food trucks should be more like obviously ice cream trucks are, you know, a staple. But they should do more different types of like roaming food trucks. You're right. Like, oh, wow, here's the burrito truck coming around. Are you kidding me? That if, yeah, I'd they, love every minute of that. They have food truck festivals now where it's just all food trucks lined I'm up. I'm saying like an ice cream truck. Mm-hmm. Like they play the music and you, you're you like, oh, that's the burger truck. Wait, the ice cream truck that we have now in our neighborhood is so useless. First of all, he goes like 90 miles an hour. He just flies up the block. The music, and he goes fly, and he's wearing these giant headphones, this guy. So he's not paying attention. He doesn't even, obviously he doesn't want to, I think he's a drug truck. I really do. Uh-huh. He, you know, and it's an old, like early 80s van yeah. with all jankety everything and, and the exhaust fumes just fill the neighborhood. Oof. It's the, it's and the signal's always, on one yeah. signal is always flashing and the other one is broken. So I, I just, I don't, I think there's some sinister stuff going on there because I don't think he cares about selling ice cream. So Scott investigates the I ice might. cream man. I think I might. I um, think <laughs> that they've also been remixing the tune. It used to be like, but now all of a sudden all it's like time. they they play like the like the clap and there's bells and there's horns and it's like. Where do you live? I'm telling you, there's a new tune. I mean, that's kind of cool. There's a new ditty. When I was little, kids are singing it, was just, it was just jingle bells. Like there was a string that came through the windshield, and he would just ring. It would go ding, 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 and he would he would have to pull it. Like what? Oh, he would. Have... <laughs> while he was driving, yeah, maybe check the YouTube video. Um, while or the he was... TikTok yeah. at Serial Killers PC. Okay, while he was driving, he would have to manually ring the bells. While so he would hold on to the steering wheel with one hand, ring the bells with the other. Seems so safe. Yeah, no, I mean, just the concept of a food truck just seems so unsafe. But then again, so do RVs. When you really think about it, hey, why don't you drive this mobile home that has an oven in it? And yeah, just in case it tips <laughs> over, there's probably going to be like zero chance this goes well. Well, my dad used to be a good humor man. And he flipped his truck over on the Long Island Expressway. He rolled it over, and there was ice cream everywhere, and he broke his collarbone. He still shows it to me. He's like, see this? This is when I was a good humor man. Was he featured in the local news? Because that feels like it's just, like, ripe for a local news story. I mean, you know, a local ice cream man survives ice cream everywhere. <laughs> but, I, it, but people didn't really have cameras everywhere back then. So unless there was a, a newsman near there. Ice, s- ice, ice cream, cream for ice cream? Yeah. This local ice cream man. <laughs> I scream on the L. I E. <laughs> oh boy, we could write them. I think that would be great. Well, the th- see, ice cream trucks I th- are really the only food truck I think that actually drives around a neighborhood looking for sales. The other ones are just parked. Yeah, they're, they're stationary. Was, you know, in hindsight, I was thinking of like, oh, they should do it like where it could drive through neighborhoods. But then, realistically, if like the yeah. burger truck came, around, you can't really stop to make people a yeah, burger and they go to the next like, corner. Hey guys, like. <laughs> Just give me five. I'll be back. (laughs) 
Yeah, I don't, I don't and it can't be on the road because then you got grease going everywhere. And you know, back in the the, the old days, mm-hmm. they used to have trucks that came and did all kinds of stuff. My mom Milk would tell me trucks, a knife sharpening truck. <laughs> they used to, yes, they, people used to run out of their houses with knives and scissors, <laughs> and the guy would be out there like grinding that in the street. And then they used, how much did people need to get the, like their knives sharpened? That's it, insane. It was a thing, yeah. and and they there were also carnival rides that would drive around neighborhoods like an ice cream truck. So they would stop, and there would be like a tilt a whirl. On, uh, parked on the corner, and then they would move on to the next neighborhood. That's like those video game trucks that they have for yes. kids' birthday parties. Yeah. But here's my question, and this is going to sound stupid, but I've always wanted to know. They don't, like, drive kids around <laughs> in the unmarked van that has, like, video no. games in it. No, they they park at a house or a place, whatever. And, and there's and they, games they, on they, the inside? They open it up. Usually it's a trailer, I've seen. Okay. And they'll, they open it, and you can either, like, walk in, or you just sit right outside because it opens up. Got and, it. And, like, the things I've that always, open block the screen so you can see. I've always wanted to know because I've always been just saying, like, this doesn't seem safe. I don't know why people would, do like, be in a car that's playing video games. I don't, I don't think that there's a creepy carpeted van that drives up, pulls kids in, and lets them play, you know, Nintendo games in the back while it's driving. Well, if you say it like that, then it's going to sound creepy. Hey, would you like to play Nintendo games <laughs> in the back of my carpeted truck? Nobody, it's not. I mean, I'm sure it exists, Andrew. There's got to be one out there. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> would you like to play? Yes. Would you like to play Nintendo games? <laughs> Sports? <coughs> Go get yourself a PlayStation. Please, you're, you're making me choke. Should we take a commercial break <laughs> I, I really think quick? We should. I can't breathe. KBRB. Okay. Um, get the thing. I am. Just give me a sec. One, two, three. Bye. Bye. You see what I did there? Mic technique. And we're back. Can you put your phone down, please, buddy? Thanks. We, you didn't let me take a long enough break. So You'll find it. It was 20 minutes. 21. Okay. You'll find it. You say that, but you're not the one who has to do it. So I went out in the hallway before to go to the bathroom, mm-hmm. and Mr. Wonderful was sitting out there. Oh, from the Shark Tank. From Shark Tank. Yeah. And I wanted to pitch my shopping cart shower cap to him. It's such a bad idea. Don't do that to anybody. Why? It's not a good idea. I'm sorry. I think that it would be very convenient. It's just wasting more plastic. Nobody needs that. But it's not banned because it's not a bag. It doesn't make sense. I would enjoy it. I'm sure you would, but it's like... So, like, I should I just bring a... Uh, maybe I would just go in and buy a plastic tablecloth and use that. Yeah. But it would blow off in the wind. It doesn't have the elastic that goes around the cart. I'm sure you can find... I let me let me look on Amazon, like, <clears throat> large elastic... I've clear. looked. Shower cap. No, they don't make it. Someone's going to listen to this, and they're going to make it and make millions. You know? I think... Hold on. Uh, I just uh, think that people like dry groceries, because now that most places don't have plastic bags anymore, and you have to use paper bags, when those bags get wet, they fall apart. Yeah, they make cart covers. Not like this. No, that's like... No, those are those are a lot of money. Custom outdoor what? cart. No, 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 that's a grill. No, that's a it's for carts. I'm talking about a shopping cart shower cap. We're, we're, I know what you're saying, and it exists. You go inside, and it's nice and sunny, and then you look out the window, boom, thunderstorm when your cart's all full. I get what you're saying. It's just, it, it exists. It doesn't. I can't find it. I looked. Well, because for what you're exactly looking for, I'm you gonna, want a le- I'm going to apply for a patent. You should. I'm going to. I just I think people would like it. I think people would like to have the choice when they're at the register to buy this little shopping cart shower cap that's just one of those clear hotel shower caps, but giant that fits over the shopping cart with elastic around it so you can push your cart and the stuff doesn't get wet. And you can just put it right in your car. Again, it sounds great in theory. They make things like that already. No. That you, can- you know what? As you say, false. Not like that. Like you say, false. Well, that's your thing now. That's not my thing. It is. Listen back. You say it a lot. Okay. It's another crutch. Okay, because you have none, because you're so perfect. Not perfect. Have Never plenty. Never said that. Never said that. I didn't. Okay. Oh, is that Sam? That was Sam. Hmm, fine. Um, so, anyway, what else is It's a bad idea. On? Well, I know Barbara uh, Corcoran shot it down, too. Because I think for the She type, laughed at me and said, you're out of your mind. The type of plastic that you need yeah. is going to need to be, like, ultra durable. It's one thing to keep no, your no, hair no, in it. No, it's one-time use. Again, so it's not eco-friendly. Recycle. You recycle it with your plastic bags. You can't bags. recycle plastic. Yeah, you can. At the supermarket, they have bins that you put the plastic oh, bags Oh, yeah, in. because how does that usually go? What are you talking about? So the landfill's filled with plastic right now. The plastic bags that are just roaming the ocean. No, All it, this other recycled. trash that's everywhere. You're they're, telling you, me. You put it in recycle bins. Okay. 
There's a, they recycle those things. So you're telling me these are going to be sold at grocery stores? No, grocery stores will give them away. It's a courtesy. Okay, they're going to give them away. Yeah. And then you just expect people after they're done to, while it's raining then, they have to dispose of it. Yeah, but what do you think? They're going to just take it off and throw it in the parking lot? That is what they're going to do. I know, but I'm, so we're then, not going to market it that way. So how are you marketing it then? Maybe we'll, you know what? Maybe we'll have special bins that go right next to the the so, cart corral. So it started with a small cheap thing that mm -hmm. I'm buying to cover my grocery cart. Right now, if I'm investing in this, I now need to create bins. They'll recycle every, recycle bins at Reci the cart corral. So then, who's recycling them? The people. Who's the people? Whoever can recycle things. For all those reasons, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> This is not a fully fledged idea. This is not even close to being a fully fledged idea. I don't know. I is there a reason why there's like a light? That's going the hotline off? that's ringing. I don't know who it is. Hotline bling is Drake calling. Should I see who it is? <laughs> that was a good one. If you actually understood it, sad that I you... did. I know the song. Well, how does it go? Hotline bling. Okay, you got it. I'll give it to you. I don't I'll know give the it words. to you. You got it. Yeah. We played it. You're hip. I know songs that we play. You're hip and in the know. That's my thing. I never went, I never did deep cuts. Mm. There are very few, it said wireless caller. I don't know who it is, so I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> what? It says wireless caller. What if it's important? Well, then it would say who it actually is. Mm. You know? Someone got the hotline number? I guess. Maybe it was the boss. Mm. Yeah, but we're not even supposed to be here. So it, whoever's working now, we're not working. Mm. Anyway. I, I don't know what to tell you. So uh, what were you saying? Um, I was saying I'm out on your idea. Okay. What's your idea? What's your invention? Um, it's my app that's going to come out soon. Fingers crossed. Hopefully by summer. The one that had the bad word in it? Yeah, the bad word. Oh. Um, we took that out. Okay. Um, but Are there any yeah. other bad words? Uh, there might be. Because it just kind of self-generates? Yeah, I'm going to tell them to like just do one last look-see before. But hopefully by the summer my game comes out. I hope so too. And then <gasps> it can sponsor the It can money. sponsor the podcast. Oh, yeah. Right? I actually think I would legally have to. Nice. Now we'll have some hotline bling. Right? That's money. <laughs> wow. What's the matter? Then nothing. Okay. Everything's fine. Do you know I built a Lego set? First of all, you built a Lego set that should have taken about two years in two days. Four days. Four days. I mean, I could have done it in two days realistically, but I had plans. Did you sleep at all? Uh, I'm very tired. <laughs> like, you built the Colosseum and I not did. Nassau, the one in Rome. Yeah, the Lego Colosseum. I have wanted this thing for so long, but it was one of those things where it's like, I'm not going to go. It's 500 bucks. I'm not spending $500 on a Lego. Sam got you that? Well, she had a contact at Lego who was able to get me the set. Wow. I, I would assume that they don't sell too many of those. No. No, actually, it's been out since 2019, and every time it comes back, it's sold out. Right now, it's in stock, hmm. but for the past couple of years, it's been it's been hard to get, and I got one. Here's I, the thing. Because what? it was a gift, I was like, holy crap. But now, what do you, how I needed it. What do you do with it? Like, do you it's have massive. Do you have like, little horse fights in there? It's like this big. What do you do with it? It doesn't fit on the shelf I thought it would, so <laughs> now I don't know where I'm going to display it. Now it's just it. In your, on your floor? No, Next never. to your coffee maker? Like, never. Where is it? Uh, you could put the coffee maker in it. No. Oh. Because that would ruin it. Why? You just put it in the middle. No. No, never. Nothing is touching my Coliseum. I may get it a box, though, because people say it gets really dusty. Oh, yes. Is it heavy? Uh, I'd say it's about, like, maybe 5, 10 pounds. Wow. It's it's a... I think it's more than that. It's thick with two Cs. Huh? It's thick with two Cs. I would do two Ks. No. No? The kids say thick with two Cs. Really? Because, like, if something's thick, you do T-H-I-C. Oh. Like, oh, you're thick. Does that mean you're fat? Uh, Well, I mean, it means you could have some, like, gains. Junk in the in trunk? Area. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah, I have a Lego Coliseum now. And um, I have to tell you, building a Lego set was a lot of fun. I wasn't expecting it to be this much fun. I kept on uh, The Staircase. Did you ever see The Staircase? The movie? No. It's the documentary series, the crime one. No. Let me tell you. I caught up on TV shows. I caught up- While you were building? Yes. How do you do? They got to pay attention. You got to look at the directions. If you get one piece wrong, it's all screwed. Yeah, so you listen to it. And it's a crime show, so it's not like you really need to look up. Yeah, you know, if there's something on TV, I must watch. I can't just listen. That's why when I'm falling asleep, it has to be something I either already saw- or just mm -hmm. news. I don't have to watch news. That I can listen to. But if it's a TV show, I'll ha I stay awake because I have to watch it. The Staircase was really good, though. It was a very interesting uh, show. 
the wife fell down the stairs and they blamed him for the murder. He spent time in jail. That was an actual thing, wasn't it? It was. Was it based on a true story? It was. And now there's a show on HBO Max that you could watch. Next up, I'm going to do the show called Outer Range on Amazon. HBO Max? Max. I miss that show. (laughs) Me too. Why has no streaming network picked this up yet? It's too it's too it's too far it's gone. It's not. It's too far gone. It's not. Look at Roseanne. That came back. The Connors. And she got fired and now it's the Connors. I like the Connors. I yeah. think it's a good show. I love trash TV. I mean that one gets like good reviews, they say. I like the Connors. I still love the Goldbergs. I love the new Wonder Years. I think ABC has a lot of good shows. Mm. Wednesday night is a great night. They had Modern Family for like a quick yeah, second. That I was, was never really good. into it. At the beginning. I liked yes. Modern this Family was calling good. again. I know. You should maybe pick it up. I'm confused. What if happens if it's important? It says wireless caller again. Okay. I don't want to get it. Well, they hung up, so no, oh they no, they didn't. They didn't. Do you want me to pick it up? I'm afraid. I'll use my phone voice. Uh, hello? No. Mine's usually like Hi, how are you? That's your regular voice. No, it's not. Well, I how, definitely... come the, how come the guy in the other studio is not answering it? Who's the other guy? In there. I don't know. All right, whatever. <laughs> I definitely do a phone voice. I mean, they could, be calling, me wait, they could be calling and saying, like, your radio station's off yes, the air. Yes, so pick it up. But what if it's just, like, a wrong number? I'm over it. I can't do it. Hurry, because it's going to end. Action, Why'd you turn the mic down? Just press it and say hello. Hurry. The one that says wireless caller. How? Are you... Dude. What button? Oh, it's this one. One more. They hung up. Don't call back. Hang up the phone, please. That's all we get is is, is wrong numbers. Not on the hotline. You know, Yes, we get wrong numbers on the hotline. How do people get that? I was at home last night. Hi, is this Jerry? No, it's not. You have the wrong number. Like, how do you dial wrong numbers? It's so funny. Like, my, my dad... <clears throat> was trying to call this store the other day because he, he bought the wrong size, whatever, and he dialed it on the phone, and they said, hello? Yeah, is this such and such store? No. Oh, I'm sorry. You're the wrong number. Okay. But then he just called it back again because he's like, let me just di-. But he just hit send again on his phone. Hmm. He didn't change the number. I said, it's going to go to the same place. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah, you got to change a number. Yeah, he didn't understand. Mm. He thought he was like dialing it again. But on a cell phone, it's the same. It dials the same number. I still prefer to call places rather than like wait to like. If there's a customer service issue, I have I hate the chat bots. Mm-hmm. I don't want to email. I like calling the place. I will wait on hold. I really? will wait my turn. See, I prefer for electronic communications with businesses and stores because they usually just like we're so sorry and they just do it. You don't have to deal with people. No, I like dealing with people because then it's like if I have an issue, I think that they'll take care of it because I took the time to call. Right. Is that true? I don't know. I but- mean, we, we had an issue with the place and we called and they were like, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll look into it and get back to you. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not satisfied with that. So I just disputed it on my credit card and the credit card said, OK, and I don't have to pay for it now. I really want to prank call someone with my uh, automated voice messaging system because I do it really well. But they're just going to hang up on you. Um, usually, I used to call Jackie with it all the time. I could probably call Jackie right now. But like 20 years ago, you could and people would interact with you. <laughs> now, they just they just hang up. If I, I call st- Jackie right now and pretend to be the automated voice messaging <clears throat> system, she's going to be like, oh, God, not again. But why? Do it to somebody that doesn't know that it's you, so it's funny. And I'll at the beginning, I'll go, bloop, you know, because it does that. No, I just usually do like... I'm an automated voice messaging system who but can wait. understand full commands. Wait, why would it, why would a voice messaging system? It's not be supposed to make sense. You? It's just to annoy the person to try and get them off the phone. You should call Uncle Johnny. That'd be funny. I'm an automated voice messaging system that can understand full commands. Call Uncle Johnny. Come on, <laughs> he'll see my number. He won't know. Star six seven. Eight. Just block it. Come on, call him. Call him. It'd I just have be to funny. Think, what would I say? It does just anything. What? Just just come on. No, he'll know. He won't know. He definitely will. He doesn't know. know a lot of stuff. Just call he'll him. He'll know. He'll know. Andrew. <laughs> that would be funny, though. Can you just call? Star 60 block it, and then, and then just call <laughs> Star him. 60 block it? <laughs> yes. What's star 60 block it? Can't you just do it? He'll he'll pick up. We have no other content for the show. We got another We got another 25 minutes. I have to think of what. No, we don't. We don't have to do a full hour. People have been accustomed. Again, it doesn't matter. As just, long as we're doing over a certain time. Can you just call old people and mess with them, please? <laughs> That's terrible. No, it isn't. That's exactly what the phone scam centers no, do. No, don't scam him. Did you him. see that, the, um, that the, there's... The... Are you okay? <laughs> Let me think for a second. 
There's a phone scam center in India. You think? And these guys went to India and shut them down. They put like roaches in lunch bags and let them loose. And they like put glitter and smoke bombs on them. And then the police arrested them. Well, yeah. It's great. They've been shut, trying to shut down all these centers. But they just moved somewhere else. Well, yeah. I mean, those things are terrible. And when, like, the way they scam old people, how could you live with yourself? They have no, they just have no feelings like, whatsoever. That's terrible. It One is. of them, legit, the girl was like, oh my God. Um, well, you know, I just had to do chemo treatment, but like, I'll clear up whatever the IRS is saying I owe. And the person's on the other line. It's like, let me talk to my supervisor. Comes back and it's like, okay, so we can lower it from 20000 to 2000 You still took $2,000 from a woman who just did chemo and is in her late 60s. Do you have no soul, you terrible human? People really should, though. Just Why don't they just pause for a moment and just process this call? Nobody is calling and saying that you owe Again, thousands of dollars. We come from a different generation. We truly do. Like I, I understand. Older people don't understand. Even emails that come through. Even with this crypto email that comes through, the way they send them now where it's like, hey, you could have compromising information, like, and I've got it. Like, you don't know how the internet works. Right. Nobody knows. So if you're an older person and all you do is stuff on the phone and someone calls you and it sounds like it's official, they don't know. And, and another one that's really bad now is um, you have a package waiting. Click here and, you know, and they give you like a fake UPS yes. tracking number. If you want it delivered, click here and you, and you got to put like information in. And I'm sure people do that because everybody's expecting a package. Yes. It's terrible. <sighs> Honestly, like I don't understand how phone companies haven't like cracked down on that yet. It's hard. It, it, but it doesn't make sense. Like how could you not Andrew, filter it, out spam calls by this point? It's no different than all the BS that is going on with, with me and and. Thousands of other people on Instagram. It's true. Like every day, somebody will, like the other day, someone texted me like, hey, your name's Andrew Jackson. Did you did your Instagram get hacked? I'm like, no, they make fake profile. And like daily, there are fake profiles with my picture and my information and they're trying to scam people. But it's not just me. It happens. There, there are a bunch of other people at this building yeah. who it's happening to and they, they try to get ahead of it, but then new ones just pop up. Your email's on the dark web. It probably is. Well, I don't think my email is, but my, my email's my on photos the dark must web. Be. I got it got leaked in like something. Oh yeah, my work one did because I get all this foreign uh, spam email my every single day. Junk mail is terrible. I get like at least five to ten messages a day. They need a better filtering system here at work because it used to be really, really good, and now there are dozens of them. Now every my morning. messages get <laughs> just gets sent to spam. It's oh good, good, good. Oh why? I don't need emails from you. Why? I don't know. I send nice emails. Uh, Imagine. Remember when you used to send chain letters via email? Do you remember when you used to send chain letters via snail mail? I used to actually be a, like afraid of, um, wait, hold on. You used to send like mail being like, if you don't pass this to 10 people. Yes. And I would say, you know, make sure you include a self-addressed stamped envelope and send this to whatever. And you, you were supposed to send it to like five people and they were supposed to send it to five people and you were supposed to get a bunch of stuff back. Mm. So you would put your address on one envelope and five other addresses or four other addresses with stamps or whatever. And you'd send it and you were supposed to get a bunch of things back, like a dollar. Like you were supposed to put a dollar. It was a huge pyramid scheme, I yeah. guess. But you were supposed to put a, send a dollar to each one of these per people. But then, you know, as it went on, it was like send a sticker. Yeah. You know, it was much, it was nicer. Mm. But, but yeah, I remember I sent a dollar to a bunch of people. I got nothing. Let me tell you. And they did it with coupons and, you know, whatever. I did uh, email chain letters. And the worst was when it would be like scary ones where it was like, oh, she died in a well. If you don't send this to 10 people, then you'll die in a well. Okay, well, that's BS. Well, Obviously. let me tell you something. When you're a young kid, you th I I definitely sent that to people. But what was the point of that? So people could get email addresses? I mean, what, I was, like, what was that for? That's probably why we're getting all the spam emails yeah, now. They've been saving for, it for 20 years. Yeah, for forwarding chain letters. Oh Me hoping God. I'm not going to get haunted by some ghost as a fourth grader. <laughs> you had email in fourth grade? I guess you do, Bart right? Boy 720 at optonline.net. sorry, what? Bart Boy 720. Like, like Bart Simpson? Yep. What was the 720? Uh, it was my friend Justin's birthday. Okay. Yeah. Bart Boy. Bart Boy. Bart from the Simpsons, 720 at optonline. That's great. My very it no longer exists. My very first e God, I don't remember what my very it must have been obviously AOL. I still have a very very old AOL address that I cannot change because everything I have is linked to it. Everything. Yeah. But I get so much spam on it cuz over the years you just get more and more and more crap, but I can't change it because there're just too many accounts that are attached to it. 
I'm subscribed to so many newsletters and it always takes me purging my email like once every five years to be like, it'll never get this bad again. 10,000 emails later, it got that bad again. But do you do it or does it just kind of happen because you click on stuff? So I try and delete accounts, but there's just no easy way to delete accounts. Like I know there's services out there that say, oh yeah, this will like delete your account permanently because there's a Firefox thing that shows you where your email's been used and where it's been hacked. And I went in and I tried to shut down all these accounts, but so many of them are just, I don't remember setting these things up. And you can't really even rely on that. Unsubscribe, I think is, is not real, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. I guess for, you know, for a reputable company, mm-hmm. I would assume it is, but for some rando scammer company, it probably just sets off more stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. they open the email. We know it's real. Let's mess with them more, <laughs> you know? But Yeah. They got to fix these things. Yes, how Andrew. It, they have how, to fix them. Like, how is there no... The, the robots can talk and walk, but you're telling me the and robots... vacuum. Yeah, they can't, but there's no way they could filter out, like, a chain letter from, like, a fake email that's all numbers and letters? Who knows? They don't know that, but they can tell me, like, where something is or which way to drive. Yeah. I, something I, suspicious. I, I fix it, Tim Cook. Okay. He used to he used to be the Sam Adams guy. You know, you know that, right? What? Yeah. Tim Cook? He was the CEO of Sam Adams. Shut up. Yep. I remember the commercials. This is Tim Cook for Sam Adams. Huh. Mm-hmm. Now he's the what, Apple guy? Yeah, he's the yeah. Apple. Mm-hmm. He started as a beer dude. Well, I don't know what he started as, but his last thing was a beer guy. Huh. Yep. You wouldn't think that would be a crossover. Well, I think it was Sam Adams. It was some beer company, but whatever. Huh. I didn't know that. Uh, what else, Andy? Do I have to drive you home today? Yes. Guess we'll be back right after this. And we're back. It wasn't a big enough hole. That was 41. It's 21 and 41. How, how hard is that? Do you know last week we did it? We'll be back right after this, and there was nothing there. And it was, and we're back right immediately. Oh, wow. So we missed out on a couple of pennies last week. Yeah, sometimes Spreaker does that, and I'm confused. Okay. But something's, something's suspicious about that. But did you know last week we had our highest rated episode ever? Which one? Bowl chat or Well, actually, killers? no, this past Monday was. Serial Killers? Yeah, that Serial Killers was our highest rated episode ever. The one with Danielle and Spencer? Yeah. I wonder why. We got like 400 new listeners. I bet he forwarded it to all. Well, first of all, didn't we, I think we promoted this one. Didn't we promote this one? I paid like $10 to do something with it. Oh, yeah. Remember? No, you did it for the Tropicana one. I, that's true. But maybe it led to new audience members. It might have bled over. Yeah, ah. but see, then they're listening to this and like, what is this? I didn't sign up for two guys, idiots, talking about ice cream trucks. Well, that's why they clearly see something that's bowl chat and something that's like 50 it's not, minutes. It's not clear. So, it's a bowl with cereal in it. So to me, that that's more cereal talk. Oh, my right? God, I just want to rage. I totally forgot that at the beginning of each one of these, we're supposed to say, this is not where you listen for cereal. This is where we just talk about random stuff. You want cereal? Be here Mondays. You want random stuff? Be here Wednesdays. You want maybe some extra stuff? Be here Fridays. Yeah? <sighs> What's the matter? I need one. I need to do another guided meditation. Open your Calm app. I will. Not a sponsor. I didn't, never. But they could be. They should sponsor Bowl Chat because you need that for me. Yes. When right? you go into mm-hmm. fits of just nonsensical nonsense. I mean, I do it to rile you up, Andrew. That is my job. It shouldn't be. It should be keeping me calm and cool and collected. No, because it's no fun. Nobody wants to listen to that. Yeah, they do. Trust me. If I'm calm, cool, and collected, people are going to say, oh, wow, he's so mild-mannered. and That's nice. Who, sa- who, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? I had it prepped. Who Maybe that's that? your crutch. What? I think that might be yours. You say who said that a lot to well, things that I say. Well, because I'm, I'm just looking for a name. <laughs> You're just fishing around for names? Yeah, I want to know who said it. Inspector Scotty? That's right. dun 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 Inspector Scotty. dun 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 What was the girl's name? Penny? Yeah. Penny. And the dog? Come on. Dog? No, what was his name? Bark? Inspector Gadget's dog. Gidget? It's going to come to me in a minute. Gizmo? I kind of like that show. It was on Channel 5 here in New York after school, I remember. But it was like, I don't want to, it wasn't a dark cartoon, but it was like dark in production. Like, it wasn't like a bright cheery cartoon it was always like yeah. uh like dungeony almost if that makes sense i wonder if i watched the same one because it used to be on like nickelodeon or they used to yeah. replay it yep. on it on a channel yep. and danger cat or danger mouse or something see i didn't really like that but they played that on nick also mm. danger mouse danger mouse <laughs> i was never a big fan that was some foreign cartoon that that whatever yeah well i 
I, I saw a couple episodes of that one for sure. I was a big Hanna Barbera guy. I loved all, almost all of the Hanna Barbera stuff. Some of them were like, eh. Like Yogi Bear would come on and be like, ah, this one's okay, but I don't love Yogi. You know. It, yeah, old cartoons. I don't know. Looney they, Tunes. I like some Looney Tunes. But the thing is, they weren't really old for me. Then again, they were because most of them were made in the '60s. Mm-hmm. A lot of the Hanna Barbera stuff was made in the '60s and '70s. Um, but I don't know. I was a Tom and Jerry, Woody Woodpecker, Pink Panther. Those are probably my my three favorites from that era. Cartoon Network used to do all old school cartoons at like a certain time. It would be the Cartoon yes. Cartoon block. Yes, Cartoon Cartoon. Yeah, I remember that. How did you know? I I did grow up. That was a while ago. Yeah, it was cartoon cartoon. Uh, who, who who's calling? Um, let's see. I have a text message from my friend uh, John. I have a text that message Renee? from Elizabeth. Renee too. Hi, Renee. Uh, yeah, Renee yeah, texted hi, me before. You? Yeah, you want some but peanuts? See, I didn't see. I didn't respond to she anybody. Can't eat peanuts, right? No peanuts. No. None. Hmm. Zilp. Okay. Zilch. Is there fake peanuts? Like for people that like the taste of peanuts? No, but I did see fake lobster. Yeah, well, they have it's fake, like a tofu. They have fake crab, like so it's kind of imitation, but it's for vegans. Do you know that most uh, I, sushi places uh, that say crab, it's not crab; it's imitation crab. So it still is something, though. Like, what is it? It's some kind of gelatinous something that they put together. I'm looking up what imitation crab is because there has to be something seafoody, right? Yeah, I mean, you can always tell when the price is a lot higher. That's real crab, or if they spell it with a K, that's not crab. Imitation right. crab. Most, I mean, like you can buy. Can- I've been googling a lot this episode. You can buy cans of that stuff. It's gross, but imitation crab, crab sticks, imitation crab. Are so it's still it's a type of seafood made of starch, finely pulverized white fish mm. that has been shaped and cured to resemble the leg meat of snow crab or Japanese spider crab. Mm. It is a product that uses fish meat to imitate shellfish meat. Okay. I sense. guess I guess they only do that because it's cheaper. Like real crab oh, yeah. is expensive. You can get that in a can. Yeah, I mean crab stick sushi. I like it, but you know it's like a dollar ninety nine. Crab stick sushi. That's what that's called. That picture you just saw. It said crab stick. Huh. That's what it is. I like it, but it's not real crab. Yeah, they do that sometimes in California rolls. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what. Oh, uh, now I could so go for a California roll. The majority of the crab that's in sushi is imitation. My mouth is legit watering. I could so go for sushi. I had sushi last night. Oh, jealous. Should we stop in Jersey City? Is there a good place? Yes. Oh, the one. Mm-hmm. I would say if Domo Domo was open, that place <gasps> is amazing. Could we go to the taco place? Which one? The, the Gringos. Uh, is it open? Why now? wouldn't it be open? I don't. It's know. lunchtime on a. A lot Wednesday. of restaurants in Jersey City don't open for lunch. Are you kidding? Gringo's is open for lunch. How Let's check. I'm going to check. I'm going to check. <sighs> Gringo's Taco, Jersey City. Oh, never mind. There's nowhere to park. Yes, there is by there's my no, building. There's never anywhere to park. You there live in the is. city. It's a city. I park literally behind my building. Yeah, Gringo's opens at five. Are you serious? No, I just said that so this way you would go, are you serious? Why wouldn't they be open for lunch? They're open, they are open from 5 to 11. I also don't understand places that are closed on Mondays. Like a lot of Italian places are closed on Monday. Why? I don't know. Just be open. You're a restaurant. Just be open. You're a restaurant. Restu- I'm sorry. I don't own one, so I don't know how it is. And I'm sorry. I guess if it's a family restaurant or whatever, you want time for your family. But restaurants should be open seven days a week. It's a restaurant. I feel like since COVID, a lot of restaurants don't open one day. Well, there's that. Because it must be a lot of like stress for the restaurant. I mean, that's, I guess, like people telling me, why don't you work seven days a week? I mean, I, I get it. But you can have other people unless you don't trust anyone. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, oh my God, now I really want sushi though. Okay, we'll find some sushi. Spicy tuna. We can go to, you know what? The 7 Eleven by the tunnel, they have it now. Blech. What? <laughs> the Exxon also. No. I've had gas station sushi before. No. It's not terrible. No. It, it, okay. I mean, not a lot of people buy it. If so. it was the 7 Eleven in Japan, yes. <laughs> the 7 Eleven here, no. Hard pass. Uh, that one you actually could because all the food was like fresh made, they made it fresh daily, everything was fresh. Yeah, the one here would taste like tunnel fumes. That one's been there sure since 2010. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep sketching in like a new <laughs> number. Who put this channel on? Oh, never mind. It's just they're just showing a clip. They're playing a clip. Forget it. Um, yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. What's your favorite type of sushi? Do you go crazy? Do you try and be a little more like... I generally get the same thing every time I go. Uh, sometimes if they have one of their special crazy rolls and there's stuff in it that I like, I'll get it. Like last night I got a rich roll. What's that? I, it's like one of the kitchen specialty rolls. You're a rich roll. Yes. <laughs> and you're, there was uh, what is it, the song? Rich Girl. You're but, a rich girl. And you're so 
It doesn't matter doesn't anyway. Wait. I always liked that song as a kid because they say bitch in it. And I was like, oh, you're a bitch, girl. Whoa. <laughs> Explicit. Yeah. That was that was like crazy for then. Yeah. And then Meredith Brooks came along and woo. Yeah, I'm a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bitch. I remember my mom was at the radio station for Mother's Day, and mm-hmm. we were playing that song in the studio, and she was like, whoa. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, she could only hear WAP now. <laughs> that's right. My, my, I mean, my go-to sushi is Yellowtail Scallion. Love. Oh, that's it's, nice. That's my favorite. Um, I do like the crab stuff, so I'll get I'll get those every once in a while. Uh, Ashley likes spicy tuna. I'll have one of those. But the Rich Roll had like spicy tuna and yellowtail and tuna and something else all up in it. Oh. Yeah, I don't like avocado. So, and here's the thing. When you go to a place that is pre-made, like I go to ShopRite, and I mean, it's fresh. The guy's there making yeah. it. But I say to him, like, you put avocado in everything. You don't make anything without avocado. Could you just make one every once in a while without avocado? I mean, I'm sure somebody will buy it. I like no avocado. Mm-hmm. I just, I over the last couple of years, like, I just, I don't like anything with avocado. I could eat it if I really needed to, but mm-hmm. I don't like it in there. Mm. I just don't like it. It just doesn't. I don't like the creamy whatever. And you don't eat guacamole. I do not. Mm. But out. but it's the kind of thing where I'm like, I don't like that, but I never really tried it. Mm. You know? Oh, yeah. You got to get good guac. So if you told me, dude, trust me, this guac is so good. Yeah. It's so good. I promise you it's so good you'll love it. Do you like onions? I would try it. I do, but I don't like raw onions, and there's raw onions in guac. Yeah. Okay. I'll think of this. I, hold on. I do like raw onions in things. I just don't like the fact when you bite into a raw onion, it gives you, like, gaggy breath, and it stays on your tongue. Well, let me it tell It makes you. me nauseous. I've said it here, and I'll say it again. I could eat a red onion by itself. Yeah, my dad could eat it like an apple. I love the taste of red onions. Yeah, my dad I could eat a delicious. yellow onion like mm. an apple. Yes. Really? So good. I don't know what it is about the taste. It doesn't bother me. But then you smell like B.O. all day. I know. That's the bad part. You know, it's a, it's a catch-22, as they might say. They might. Um, do you like... Have you ever had hot honey? Mm, I don't... Yeah, I think I might have had it glazed on some chicken or something one time. Yes, no, maybe so. Don't know. Okay, well... It's spicy honey, isn't it? Yeah, but okay. there's a place in Jersey City that does guac with uh, hot honey on it, and it's so good. Okay. <gasps> do you want to go to a Sonic? No, I don't. Damn it. There's nothing healthy at a Sonic. Oh, I'm trying to be careful, Andy. Blood test on the way. When's the blood test? June. First week of June. Oh, fun. This year, I'm going to go get my physical. I think by August, I'm going to go. Good. Good for you. I need to go. I still need the it's colonoscopy. It's been six years. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I haven't gone for a physical in like six years. Yeah, I still need the colonoscopy. That has to be this year sometime. Yeah. I really just want to poop in the box and call it a day, but I guess it's not as thorough. This sucks. The whole getting older thing, let me tell you something. Because now I'm 31, and I have to think in the next four years, I think by 35 I have to start going because there's definitely a gene in my family for that type of cancer. Well, right. If if, if it's in your family, then yes. Then Great. You definitely. That, and something to look forward to. Or by 40 at the, at the latest. It's so lame. You go from being like, oh, yeah, 18, I'm legal. Oh, yeah, 21, first legal drink. Oh, 25, I could rent a car. That was a big one for me. Oh, Well, you can rent before that, but it costs a lot more. And now it's like, oh, you're 35. Now you can just go get a camera up your butt. Well, yeah. Not fun. I mean, you could do that at any age, Andrew. Come to my... Uh, never mind. <laughs> um, so anyway... Let's wrap up this episode of Bowl Chat because you know what? You do have to stick around. We do have to do serial killers after this. What? I just realized. Why? Because I don't have any more time this week to record. It's going to be a problem. <sighs> you yeah. always will. Like I tell you what. We'll do it on Friday at 10 a.m. Done. Can you do that? Yes. Okay, fine. Woo! Done. Woohoo! All right. Cool. Uh, thank you for listening. That was from The Simpsons. Woohoo. Email me at bartboy720 at outonline.net. <laughs> you think anyone has that? Send an email to it. No, it doesn't work anymore. I shut down that account. Oh, is optonline.net still a thing? Uh, I don't think so anymore. That was Optimum, right? Optimum Online? I Okay, so this is going to be super, super, super incredibly niche. And I don't even think that we have a listener out there who would know. But Optimum, like optonline.net used to have a movie section because you could search movie times. You couldn't buy tickets there. You still have to buy the tickets at the theater. <laughs> you could see the movie times. They also had an upcoming movie part. And you could see what's like was scheduled. Whoever was in charge of that was definitely like doing a little booger sugar and would just put things like this one's coming out in the year 2260. (laughs) And it would be like Spider-Man 64. And you'd be like, what? Is this really true? Just so you know, when I was a kid, we had to call 777 film 
That's how we got our movie times or the newspaper. I did the newspaper. I they remember. still print them. They st- uh, really they still print movie times in the newspaper every once in a while. I love that. I think it was such like an innocent time. Yeah. I miss things like that. I still get the newspaper every Sunday. I mean, people make fun of me, but it's that's been my routine for many many years. I get the paper. I have a coffee. I sit at the table. I watch the news and I read the newspaper. I like it. The entertainment section of the New York Times is always fun because it would have the listings of TV that night, mm-hmm. and there was always someone super witty being like. Well, if you really think that watching this is good for you, let's say you have another thing coming. Like, it would be super, super witty. It was great. See, I can't do the New York Times. It's too intellectual for me. Like, if a paper folds down, I'm out. <laughs> it has to be just like, you know, magazine-sized. A little bigger, you know, like a newspaper, like a Daily News or whatever. But like a, a Wall Street Journal or a New York Times, like, if you have to fold it down and you're like, this big giant pages that you scroll out, no, I'm, that's not for me. I think my parents used to be mad um, growing up because I wouldn't read the newspaper and so then when I would, I would just kind of scan it and look for stories and then just be like, yeah, that's something. Well, like when you had to do current events as a kid, you'd have to take the newspaper and read through the newspaper. Yeah. Right? Our paper boy, his name was Norman. I remember. I don't know why I remember that. But see, back in the 80s, it was okay to get the newspaper when the kid came home from school. So he would get home from school, deliver the newspaper at like 3.30 in the afternoon. Meanwhile, all that news is old at that point. And it just, but it didn't matter then, mm. you know, now you'd be like, I heard about that hours ago on, on Twitter, you know, now so it's true. like, they, they, it's a different time. I, I'm assuming you never had a paper route because you were too old for like, no, I didn't do a paper route. I see. We had a penny saver. I just caddied. We had a penny saver route. Mm. So on Saturday mornings or whatever. So what they would do, the penny saver was, it was, um, you know, there were a few like little articles in it, but mostly it was like for sale stuff mm-hmm. and garage sales and sale circulars and, and whatnot. So they would deliver it on a Friday night wrapped in these things, like big bundles. They throw yeah. them in your driveway and it had the actual penny saver. Then it was every supermarket circular in town. So there were like six of them. Wow. You know, it was Wallbaums and Pathmark and, and Grand Union oh, and Pathmark. Food Town. Oh, Grand Union. Food Town and whatever was around at the time. Aww. You know, and so they would throw big bales in your driveway hmm. and you had to sit and assemble them and put them in a bag. So we did that on Friday night. And Damn. then on Saturday morning, we would load up the go-kart with a red wagon on the back of it. And we'd just go flying around the neighborhood and just heat throwing them. Chucking them. Chucking them. We didn't care if it, you know, it would miss, go in the lawn, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, that was, we did that for a couple of years. Hmm. That was fun. Good times. Great oldies. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of Bull Chat. Yes. We'll see you on Monday with an all-new Serial Killers, where I'm pretty sure we will try a new Cheerios flavor. Um, actually, you don't need to drive me home anymore. Why? Because I think I'm going to stay. Oh, because your buddy Josh is here and you'll go home with him? Uh, well, I mean, no, because he lives in Brooklyn. I live in Jersey City. Oh, he City. does? Yeah, I think we're- I don't know that. We're gonna, do you want to stay? We're gonna, I think we're going to do lunch from Kava. I don't think I can. I really need to get home. I mean, we do DoorDash, so it'll just come right here. I, you can wait 30 minutes. I get it, but I, you know what? If you never had Kava, you need I to have. have. I told you in the last episode oh, yeah, I had I Kava. I forgot. You just have boiled chicken in a lentil bowl. All I'm saying is, look, if you understand, like, okay, we're in New York City. Yeah. I live on Long Island. Yeah. And the longer I stay here, the more traffic builds up. Well, the 20 minutes that you would no, have spent it, it, driving it, me trust home. Trust me, it matters. Okay. Well. It matters. Believe me. All anyway. right. Well. Let me get the bowl, Andrew. I can't up. wait for this freaking kava bowl. I am going to get the crazy feta. Wait. I'm going to get some feta. This is not the place where you I got the meatball bowl, right? This is different. That's dig in. Right. Because I know that kava does not have that. No. Dig in. Uh, that I was another. Their, their quality kind of went down a little bit. That was another trendy bowl place. No, this, it still is. I mean, it exists. Oh. But kava just, it's Mediterranean, so you can't really F it up. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for listening to Bowl Chat. We'll see you Monday with Serial Killers, and then Wednesday we'll do another Bowl Chat. And we'll Woo-hoo! talk about nothing. Yeah. Please follow us on all social platforms at, at Serial, Serial Killers PC. PC. And if you're listening to this, like and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I don't know. Maybe it's, a, oh, it's always on. Okay, if I'm watching it this way. Yeah, it's over here. Hit that button. This one. Hit it. I don't know what that Click means. Click and subscribe. And just you can send us topics. Go to our website, serialkillerspc.com. Uh, hit serialkillerspc us up on- at gmail.com as well if you want to send us topics and things to talk about. Haley Gold, thank you once again for sending us your book. It's out now if people want to go buy it. It's the... Hold on. I'm just going to show it one more time on camera. The serial thing? Yes. Okay. It's this thing. You've got wires everywhere. I know. You're choking yourself. <laughs> This one. We'll put a link to it as well. Letters to Margaret by Haley Gold. We'll put a link so people could buy it if they want. It's by Lone Shark Games. Okay, cool. Thanks. Bye. See ya. Oh, clink. 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 <laughs> okay. 
That's it. We don't have to do anything. Yeah, okay. we're done. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. See ya.